of the Philadelphia Eagles? Well, first of all, when you take a guy like Brian Westbrook away from the lineup, you lose a factor back. And what I mean by that, that's a guy that's a factor in every aspect of the game, first, second, and third now. You can put him out in space, he can do a lot of things. And in order to replace him, they had to use two guys, Nick uh, Carell Bulkholter as well as Lorenzo Booker. So I look for those guys to do well. But the key to Philadelphia is their defense, and I don't think that – that defense is going to lose a beat because Jim Johnson, he likes to blitz. The moment they step off the plane, he's going to blitz until they get back on the game. game. And if you look at him on paper, he's not the fastest guy. He's not the biggest guy. But you know what? When you look at the stat sheets at the end of the game and you watch the film, he's in on every play. We used to call him the werewolf. You get hit by Ray Lewis. You I really got, know about it. I got, I got hit by him a couple of times. And you know what? The best way I can explain it to you is go put your uh, shoulder pads and helmet on and let a car going about 10 or 15 miles per hour <laughs> hit you and get up from that. That's what it feels like when you get hit by Ray Lewis. Be the of this football team. I think that, um, first of all, I don't think Tony Romo is that immature to take an approach like that. And I think that however that came out, I mean, it came out a, a number of different ways. I, I just don't think it's like that. And I think the T.O. has to understand that. But Tony Romo, he has to be assertive. He has to get in T.O.'s face and let him know, you know what, T.O., I'm the quarterback. I run the team. I distribute the ball. If you have a problem, come talk to me. Don't go talk to the But media. that's part of the problem. He doesn't. He doesn't say that. He just sort of, you know, lives in his own little world and hangs out with his buddy who just happens to be Jason Witten. And you know what? That's the case of the tail wagging the dog. If he wants to take this team, you know, deep into the playoff or even make the playoff, he's got to step up and make hard decisions and make yourself uncomfortable and do things like that. What does that production mean for Drew Brees? It doesn't mean anything unless he's consistent and he does it again. But then secondly, Drew Brees, he can't continue to throw as much as he's been throwing to be successful, especially on a night like tonight in frigid weather when they're not in the dome in Chicago. They have to have that running game inside the tackles. What do they want to do? They want to run the screens, draw, swing pass, and the bubble pass. They want to get to the outside in order for them to do that. A defense has to respect their inside game. Pierre Thomas is a guy that's going to make the defense respect their inside Eight game. Eight home games, that's the first time they'll play here at home eight times in school history. The one thing that's significant about this season, Tom, is they don't have Michigan on the schedule and they don't have Ohio State on the schedule. They have a chance to go really far, and they also have a really strong veteran defense. Those are the components that you need to make a bowl run. Yeah, Tony, we had a chance to talk to head coach Bill Lynch, and he said, why can't we get to a BCS bowl game? He looked at the models of Kansas, of Missouri, they did it. Why can't the Hoosiers do it too? And the Hoosiers have one other component that they'll need to get to a bowl game, and that's Kellen Lewis. He's their all-everything dynamic player. This is a guy, along with a strong defense, that can help the Hoosiers take it very far this year, Tom. It's the home opener for Indiana against Western Kentucky. For now, let's send it back to Dave Revson in Chicago. Tony McGee, who has the thankless duty of being exposed to the elements today. Tony, how is that field? Thanks, guys. The field down here appears to be in pretty good condition. They just took the tarp off about an hour ago. They said they have a really good drain system that can keep the water level down on it. We'll see how it holds up for them today. Guys, the key is going to be footing and securing that ball. We'll see how it holds up for them today on the field. Tony Kev, that's what I don't like because a true leader of a team makes the players around him better. And you know what he needs to do? He needs to lift his game up a level. If you look at last week, he had 14 carries for 24 yards. He also had five catches for 59 yards. That's 19 total touches, but no explosive plays, no big plays. When you get your hand on the ball 19 times, I was a tight end. If I'd have got my hands on the ball 19 times in the game, you better believe I would have got to realize where the first down is. And he has to understand that the Cowboys are bringing a lot of pressure, especially DeMarcus Ware coming off that left side. So you got to run that route speed. Speed everything up in your mind. Get your head around quick and try to get the first down. He has to be that viable option inside for Manning. He's got to be a security blanket like Witten is for Tony Romo on the other side of the ball. So what is your job when you're you're in a route and you know they've got a full blitz going on? What is your responsibility? you got to speed up everything in your mind. You just speed it up, get your head around. That's just... Uh, call it field awareness or that sixth sense just start to kick in. When you take off the line of scrimmage and everyone disappears, you know at that point, get your head around yeah. because the quarterback's under duress and he needs to get it out. B big hitting in this ball game too. Big hitting. Ed Reed, he does it the way that it's supposed to be done. If you watch Moeldy Moore take it around the right edge, right around Heath Miller's block right here. We talk about guys coming up and just laying a lick, being low at the point of attack, not absorbing the blow but delivering the blow. That's a blow right there. Look at him. Legs spread down low, and he's saying, you know what? You don't want any more of that, son. Effective anyway. And they've got Rashad Mendenhall, the rookie from Illinois, who was a great player at that level. He considers himself an every down back. But the problem he has is he can't hold on to the ball very well. So he can't fumble the ball today. And this uh, Ravens defense is known for causing turnovers. Ed Reed, 
Ray Lewis. These guys are ball hawks. They're going to hit him. They're going to hit him hard consistently. So you know what? He better man up and show up to play. Yeah, right? this really is welcome to the NFL Cowboys. Yeah, Steve Spagnuolo, the defensive coordinator for the Giants, he alluded early on that he was going to go for the blitz. And when we take a look down at this picture here, there's nobody back here. All the Giants players are up on the line of scrimmage. We call this a jailbreak. Tony Romo knows right now that if he gets the ball to one of his receivers, they should score. All they have to do is break one tackle because it's man-to-man -man coverage all over the field. Gets the ball to Jason Whitney, breaks one tackle, and runs into his own man, Roy Williams. Otherwise, he would have scored. What do you see with uh, Marion Barber? Uh, well, the first thing I see, John Madden said he didn't know where the training room was. In the Dallas Cowboys locker room, the training room is right next to the locker room. So if Marion Barber doesn't know where the training room is, <laughs> maybe he, he never looked left. He definitely has some problems. You know what players are like, you know. I mean, come on, everyone knows where the training room is. Come on, Kev, it wasn't about discipline, it was about hard hitting. That's why they won that game. Mm. Hard hitting. Good, solid football. They put a quarterback in. They didn't put him in a bad position. All he had to do was facilitate and manage the game. Cal Wharton didn't have to go out and win it. But I'll tell you. And she goes, why is the, uh, the no huddle offense been so important for Pittsburgh in this game? What it is is a spread offense. We talked about that uh, yesterday, getting the spread offense. They're spreading everybody out, creating one-on-one -on -one situations. Santonio Holmes, he's a perfect guy. He's a shifty guy. He works great in space. You match him up one-on-one -on -one against a linebacker or DB, he has a two-way goal. He had it right there. Roethlisberger connected with him, and he got the touchdown. And suddenly off the back. Branding with the selection of Matt Ryan. The question is, though, does the kid have the goods to be able to deliver? I think he definitely has the goods. Like I said, they think that this is a Peyton Manning-type player. JB, but in order for him to develop, they have to surround him with the right cast of characters. They have Roddy White at the receiver, they have Mike Turner at the running back, but they don't have an offensive line. If I'm them, I'm going to take a year off, let him develop. I'm going to do him like they did uh, Carson Palmer in Cincinnati. He sat behind John Kittner for a year, watched him develop. When he got his opportunity, he led uh, Cincinnati back to being a respectable franchise. Polite way of saying they still need a few more parts there in Atlanta before they put him in the fire, huh? Yeah, they definitely need a few more parts. They've got to go out and they've got to rebuild the offensive line first and foremost. Then they have to rebuild through the draft. If they give him a year to develop, he's going to come in there his second year and be extremely successful. Candid insight from Tony McGee of the New York Giants. I'm James Brown. I'm James Brown. Let's send it back to New York. Now on to Murray State versus Indiana. Tony McGee is there. It's a primetime game, meaning a great chance to showcase Kellen Lewis. Massive game for him last week. How was he and his performance received by Bloomington? They welcome Kellen Lewis back with open arms here. They're very excited about him and what he can do for this program. They want the rest of the world to see that he is one of the best dual threat quarterbacks in all of college football. Anytime you have a guy, Mike, that can put up 450 yards of total offense, two touchdowns in the, in the air, two touchdowns running the ball, there's something to really get excited about. Around here, the expectation is to win bowl games, not to just get to bowl games. Yesterday, I spoke with Kellen Lewis, Mike, and you know what he told me? He had butterflies going into the game last week, but once he got the no-huddle offense going, he got his teammates involved, he felt a lot more comfortable. Mike, I don't think Kellen's going to have any problem with primetime tomorrow night. Tony will be with Wayne Larravee and Chris Martin for the call of the Racers and Hoosiers 7 Eastern.